Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new case on Fractal. This is the Defined C, and the C stands for compact. When we kind of get into the thick of it, you'll see why they've kind of given it the compact kind of name. Compact name, yes. Compact case, yes. Compact price. Well, this is going to come in. I've just seen the price, eighty-three pounds, eighty-three ninety-nine. So we'll say eighty-four, all bar a penny. Um, sadly, all the exchange rates and stuff are playing absolute havoc with the prices at the moment, and you, you, you're kind of just going to have to get used to that for the time being. We need a strong pound to be able to bring our pricing back down, but we don't need to get into politics with a case review. So, I think it's probably about time we uh, take a look at this. But I've not even peeled the plastic off the windows yet, so you're going to get some exciting, naughty times to share with me when we do that as well, because I always get a bit overexcited. But anyway, it's time to have a look. So, despite the glare from the studio light, this isn't where we would normally start in a case review, but I need to kind of explain uh, what the difference is with the compact range, because let's face it, when we see the case and we look at it from the front, it does look very much like the um, Define S. And that's kind of because Fractal have got a bit of um, a brand identity going on, so that's a really good thing. But when we take the side off, which I will add is a lovely big full side panel window, which I've just left the plastic on. When we take it off, it kind of, the compactness starts to make a little bit um, uh, more sense, or the compact naming starts to make a little bit more sense. Because uh, if you're used to, or you have seen the Define S, it was pretty much, it had a big cavern of space at the front where you could put extra water cooling radiators and stuff in. Well, essentially the best way I can explain this is that's gone. So the case is a lot shorter. It's, um, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll say depth, so it's not as deep. Uh, and it's a little bit shorter at the top side too. So they've made it a very compact case. Now I am going to give you more details in the rest of the review, but I just wanted to give you the early highlight before we start doing everything else. So that's that bit done. You know what's coming. Now we're gonna crack on with the review as we would have done usually. Okay, so it's really not the best camera angle, but it's the best I can do for now. So this is the very top of the case. So we've got reset button, power button, which does light up, two USB 3s, it's got an internal USB 3 header as well, and then you've got your um, audio jacks, nice and simple. What we also get with the front though is the Modgy vent. Now this is a complete cover with the other cases, like the Define and the like, I'm just trying to find the clip. This would have been uh, for individual fans and you could have taken uh, it off in sections. With this, it comes all off in one and it exposes um, a mount for 220 millimeter fans or 240 millimeter fans. See the 120s down this side and you can also see the extra um, slidey slots for the uh, 140s. But the great bit is, is, as you can see, there is a huge offset. It's very, right over to the very outside of the case as best as it can do. Now, if you uh, prefer to have your the top fans uh, intaking or you don't like this kind of look to it, it does also come with a magnetic filter that you can clip on to clean up the, uh, the look of the roof. Lovely, so you can either have it with the filter, without the filter, or if you don't want fans at all, you can clip the whole thing back on. Pretty much got everything to please everyone. So around to the normal side with the front is very similar to the uh, Define S where with the power button we do have the power light at the front. We have these vents down both sides of the case. But something that is quite cool is uh, from the front you can just grab at the bottom and then pull out the full length bottom dust filter. This goes right the way through to the back and covers the um, power supply too. But then when we do, we have done that, it's easier with that removed to be able to remove the front panel altogether, give it a bit of a pull. On the rear side of the front panel, we do have the uh, bitumen sound deadening foam, the Frap Tower fame for that. If you've not seen it, used it, felt it, then you don't know what you're missing. And then we have a really, really large dust filter at the front. And um, I use the Fractal or a Fractal case as my home server and uh, it's on 24-7 with some fairly decent flowing fans on it as well 
And I can say that these dust filters are actually really quite good. Give them a clean once a week, every two weeks, and you can keep on top of it. You're about once every six weeks. If you're a bit anal like me, you'll want to give the uh, fans a bit of a clean, uh, but that's it. You won't get any massive amounts of dirt going in. Now, one thing I will say is when we get onto the inside and I talk to you about the power supply cover, there are two screws here at the front, and that's the only two screws that you do need to remove to get the, uh, the cover out, which again, I will show you in a minute. From the front of the case, this is the uh, one included fan that comes in the front. There is another 120 millimeter in the back of the case for an exhaust. Uh, but what we can see from uh, this angle is um, it, there's enough room there to put a 360 millimeter radiator, should you wish. There are mounts here as well, if you want to put a 280 millimeter radiator instead. With the 280 millimeter rad, it does come above the um, breaker. So here we've, um, if you wanted to put a 360 mil rad in, this needs to be removed, which again, I'll show you on the inside. But if you want to use a 280, so two times 140 millimeter fans, you can get that in above. Two times 140 millimeter fans, that, that is going to mean if you wanted to use that for argument's sake for a H110i GT or um, the X62 from NZXT, that's the new one. That should just about nestle in in the front. It'll be a bit tight, but it should go in there. So anyway, that's the view from the front. Dust filters, 360, 280. One fan from standard, but there is another one at the back should you need it. If you want to fit a 360 in the bottom, this does need to come out. Bullet points, all good, yes. Round to the back of the case, and uh, although I'm holding it on, there is ample room in there for all the cables. So when we take the door off, again round the back, more of the famed fractal bitumen panelling, which gives the panels a really heavy kind of quality sort of feel. Now, when we're looking round the actual back of the motherboard tray itself, you're looking at about 20 millimetres of room round here. Uh, so you can see we've got ample room to be able to get cables up the back. It would be a bit tight if we were trying to get the 24 pin cable up this side, but there is actually uh, an, sort of an alcove or a recess on this side, giving us a lot more room. And if I zoom you in so that you can see, down in the bottom section, you can see that there is direct access from the power supply sort of area straight into this recessed area is the best way I can put it. It does also give you an angle to get straight into the motherboard with your 24 pin and your PCI Express and the like. So there is actually loads of room around the back of the case. One of the other things with the, uh, the back of the case as well is what you can see is we have these tie down points literally all over the place for your cables. So there's, if you did need to put cables on there, you could get them in really nice and tight and lined wherever you want. Obviously there's not a massive amount of room around the back, so you're gonna have to go uh, a, you know, a little bit more careful with the cables. We've actually got in here uh, another PCI Express cable wired in, so you could go um, SLI, and that was just so that we were showing the amount of cables in the case. So we've not skimped with any of the cables really. Uh, another thing up at the top here, it is removable, but this is a mount for three, two and a half inch uh, hard drives or solid state drives as they're more likely to be with someone that's going to buy in this case. Uh, and that is easily removed and easily screwed back in place as well. So you can keep hard drives out the way should you wish. There isn't anywhere massively on display that you can put them. Uh, down in the bottom section, in this section here, it is a bit hidden because of where we've got the cables. Uh, but there is two 3.5 inch hard drive mounts on sliders, normal kind of fractal style. This is removable as well. It needs to be removable because if you want to remove that bottom plate, like I told you for a 360 millimeter radiator or extra fans or whatever, then this does need to be removed. If you do remove it, there's not, you can move it up closer to the power supply, but uh, if you do move it up closer to the power supply, then you may run into issues with cabling. The, we're using an older Fractal white power supply here, which is semi-modular, and I would say if you're using a semi-modular power supply, then you're not going to be able to move the hard drive cage up any closer. If you're using a fully modular power supply with um, uh, decent connectors, 
then you will be able to edge it up a little bit. Um, but to be honest with you, if what I would personally say is if you are going to remove the bottom plate to put a radiator in, especially any sort of size radiator, not just fans, radiator as well, I would personally say that the um, 3.5 inch hard drive mounts need to be removed and disposed of altogether. So please consider that if you're thinking about using this. Now, this is a 180 millimeter power supply. Some of the power supplies out there will be just 160 mil, so it gives you, a, it gives you 20 millimeters little bit more room. If you were to couple all of that together, then you might be able to squeeze it in, but I think it would still be a little bit too tight. And you would also be able to see the top of the hard drive bay from the other side of the case. So I'm gonna stick with, if you wanna use a front rad, full length, rip the mechanicals out and just seek other options. You do have the 2.5 inches up here. So if you do need a bigger hard drive, like a two terabyte, you can pick up mechanical 2.5 inch um, uh, hard drives that could fit here. Or most difficult thing would be maybe save up and get yourself something like a two terabyte crucial solid state drive to use as storage. These are all just options. I know I'm going into a lot more you know, depth and all that kind of mumbo jumbo than most people are gonna care about, but I'm just trying to answer any possible questions and help with any queries that you may have when it comes to the actual uh, living with and using the case. So back to the business side of the case, and we've got the front off again, but this is just to show you, you when you remove the bottom panel, and it's metal. It's not plastic like a lot of the other cases. There are cases out there that are actually more expensive than this, and they have a um, power supply cover, and it's plastic. Also, difficult thing is, is it's full length power supply cover as well. It goes right from the front, right from the back, to the front. A lot of places are leaving gaps because it's actually easier to manufacture them because then they can just put them in and rivet them in place. Uh, this, you wouldn't be able to just remove this without taking the bottom of the case out. So the fact that it's full length, I really like because that annoying gap, the 20 mil gap at the front that you get with a lot of them actually does my OCD and I don't like it. And the fact that we've actually got a properly removable plate as well, which goes right to the front as well, tip top. But this in then, in lies, brings us the other problem. This is the mechanical hard drive cover. And now you can see that if you were to move it, you'd still see a bit of it. But don't forget, if you're a little bit handy with a Dremel and you were worried about it, you could mark where you wanted this to be and chop it off and put it back in. You could put some um, double-sided foam tape in there or something, or there's many options that you could do. You could just put it back in there, a bit of hot glue underneath. I don't know, many ways, but you could uh, mod it if you did want to have it back in there. But like I said, once you've opened this area out, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be a bit difficult anyway. You're gonna be very limited with the graphics card choice. From the very back of the case to the very front of the case, you're looking at 360 millimeters, so uh, 36 centimeters. We come that little bit further in so that we're on the tip of the PCI brackets at the back. You're looking at um, 330 millimeters before a fan. Now that's obviously the crucial thing because you're obviously gonna want a fan in the front. So there's 330 millimeters of room before a fan. So what you would need to do is factor in how big a graphics card is. This is a, uh, an MSI. Uh, 1070 so it overhangs the motherboard a little bit uh, if you were this one is let's have a look it's 290 280 rather 280 millimeters long uh, so if we were to be thinking about uh, with this graphics card specifically if we were to be thinking about radiator choices if we did want to go down that route then an absolute maximum thickness for me would be 40 millimeters uh, and then we would have it pretty much touching but it would be okay so 40 mil room is pretty good considering how much shorter the case is i would say that's actually uh, quite clever use of room to be fair another thing with the uh, power supply cover is you can have your power supply around both ways so you can have it this way round so it will intake. I know people keep saying about it stealing air from inside the case. You really don't need to worry about that. Power supplies 
decent power supplies, the fan hardly spins anymore. So you just don't worry about it. So you can have it either way. Also with these little vents, what it can also do is if you have a, a radiator in the front, so you're running a 364 length, it can mean that the air still has um, a path to be able to get out of. So then it's not gonna matter which way that your power supply is actually facing, it's just going to give the air somewhere to escape. Otherwise you'd end up with a clogged zone here and it would just end up creating turbulence and it just wouldn't be that great. I said to you about the recessed area before, about with the cables, you can see that you can get a really nice angle with the cables. What we can also see is it's actually perfectly lined up with the ends of graphics card. So even if you had a massive graphics card which came right to the front of the case, it's not gonna hit this at all. One thing I would say with this is uh, if you're gonna be running uh, a graphics card that might have an AIO that comes out the front, make sure you think about the radiator sizes for your AIO and also get a bit of a gist for where you might want to put the, um, the actual radiator itself as well, because uh, you might want to put it in the front, in the back. Where it is so compact, it just needs a little bit more thought. So on to the roof, a good look at the roof. There's uh, more than enough room for a set of fans above the uh, motherboard itself. So if you just want to set those up as an exhaust, then there's more than enough room. You're not going to have to worry about it uh, hitting or conflicting with any hardware or anything on the inside. The offset only really comes into play when we start talking about AIO. So adding a radiator or an all-in-one water cooling unit into the roof, that's the time when we start talking about the offset. Now this is a very crude way of doing it, but it's the best way that I can really show you on camera. That is a set of Corsair LPX memory. It is their kind of shorter memory, but it does show you that there is more than enough room here. I mean, I can get my hand in above the LPX and then you can still see that the uh, radiator and fans would clear. So you're gonna be able to get some relatively decent size memory now. I don't know an exact size because it's been very difficult to try and work it out. But as long as you're not running ridiculously sized, you know, over height memory, then you'll be fine. Uh, the, uh, something like the Dominator Platinum might be a bit hit and miss, but once you get your kit in there, you'll be able to kind of uh, go through and uh, work out the best course. Obviously, not everybody air calls. This is a cryo rig, uh, and it's, this is a 140 millimeter fan model as well. And we've got this in here and with the side panel on and everything. So big, tall um, air coolers, they'll fit in the case fine as well. So there's absolutely loads of room for you to be able to get uh, the, 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 really the high end sort of cooling kit in here as well. We've said to you that you'll be able to get um, uh, 120 AIOs in the roof. You'd be able to do that with a good drop as well. So you would be able to run one with push pull if you wanted and you didn't have big memory or like I've shown you here, a high-end air cooler, you can get those in here as well. Even though it's compact, there is still loads of room for the, 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 kind of the best the leading edge hardware. Okay then, peeps. So, the award that I'm gonna give this, to be honest with you, it could be value for money because you do get a lot of value for money, but um, to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna give it the Innovation Award. And it's, I'm gonna try and explain why, because um, I really liked the Define S, but the Define S with a normal kind of build in it, like the one I did for Fractal that went to Computex, if you didn't have uh, water cooling in it and radiators so it was all full up, it did look humongous. It did look like it was a big too big. It made the hardware inside look small and out of place. Uh, but with this, what they've essentially done is they've kind of, they've shrunk it down, but not in a way that it's made it too small. It's incredibly compact to the point I've just realized that I didn't say that it's 40 centimeters, so 400 millimeters long. It's 210 millimeters wide, and then a total height of 445 millimeters. So they've shrunk it down but without actually making it unusable. Because sometimes in small cases, they can become a bit of a pain in the bum. Now, I would personally say this is a perfect case for a kind of hybrid build. And by hybrid, I don't mean something that's, um, you've got air and water cooling all kind of mixed in together like on the graphics card. 
I'm kind of talking about like if you've got an air cooler on your graphics card and you've got a, an AIO in the roof, it'll be absolutely fine. Or you're just going to go solo and you're just going to go uh, all air, absolutely fine. It, you could get uh, water cooling radiators in here, but it would be incredibly cramped. So that would then mean it's not going to be an easy water cooling build. It will be challenging, but not impossible. Like I've said, I've shown you that you can get uh, the radiators in the front. I've shown you that you can get decent radiators, width, thickness radiators in the roof. You could get a 60 in the roof, fine, with a single set of fans. It would just mean that when it comes to pumps and reservoirs and stuff, you're going to have to hide them underneath the front section. I think, personally, if I was going to be forced into water cooling this, I'd probably have a... Um, 60 mil thick rad in the roof. No, actually, I'd go 45 mil thick radiator in the roof. I'd stick a 30 mil thick radiator in the front. It's going to be ridic tight though. And then I would have my pump and a little reservoir in the bottom. You can get some pass through plates that you can screw in so that you can have your barbs and stuff going up over here. So it could be done. It's not going to be something that's going to be totally impossible. But like I said, it would just be very tight. I personally think that this is absolutely perfect for a normal CPU AIO in the roof and then uh, a graphics card on air or if you're lucky enough to have one of the, the ones where you have um, an AIO rad as well, you could get that uh, bolted into the front. Really, for 83 quid, the fact that it doesn't use much of your desk real estate, but you can still get a full ATX in here proper graphics cards, options for water cooling and stuff. It's an absolute master stroke. And I love it. I absolutely love it. The only thing that I would like be really nitpicky about, and it is very nitpicky, is I'm not really a fan of the grill. I understand why it's there. I just, I, I think I would probably have just kind of done without it. But, you know, it's a cracker and it's one of those ones where uh, when I was reviewing it, it was like, why hasn't anyone really done this before? Because it's kind of, it's got an M80X size to it. You know when you get an M80X case and it just feels that little bit smaller, it's not quite as um, uh, deep front to back and you know, it's got that little bit of height drop. When it turned up and I got it out of the box, it did feel like an M80X case, yet you know, you could easily put a second graphics card in here if you wanted to and run SLI and the, the fans would be blowing straight. It, brilliant case for the money, absolutely brilliant. And one that I'm really, really, I personally really like. And I can honestly say, I mean, I'm not gonna get all excited and expect a white one to come because the Define S has been out a long time and it's still only available in black. But if a white one was to turn up, then I can honestly say, that I would put my own personal rig in one of these like that. And it's only because I prefer a white case I would do that. Um, but if I was going to be building, for argument's sake, someone asked me to build them a gaming rig, this would be it. I can honestly see system integrators now falling over themselves to grab these because it really is brilliant. So if you're thinking about building yourself a cheap build and you want it as a gaming rig, I mean, hell, this is small enough to be able to have a big LAN rig, if that makes any sense, because you can have all of your graphics cards and all of your LAN stuff in there, but it is still small enough that you can pick it up and it's not like a monstrosity. It's brilliant. I love it. I can't say anything more good about it and I haven't really got anything particularly bad to say about it either. So yeah, I'm gonna look forward to seeing uh, your creations in this one. Uh, but for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the Innovation Award winning Fractal Defined C Stroke Compact with another video for you, out.